the road. The ground underneath my boot heels burns right through my soul. Come on, Pierce. Yeah, it's either that. Right yeah. through my weary soul. Wildfire travels on a wavering wind through a field of broken dreams. Your memory flies to my restless heart on fallen angels' wings. And I wish I could have stayed. I wish I could have changed. But a rambling man is a rambling man by any other name. By any other name. Shipping sands beneath the shooting stars, some bright and shining stars. A woman like you was born in love with a kind and gentle hand, but I was born a rolling stone and I'll die a rambling man. I wish I could have stayed, I wish I could have changed, but a rambling man is a rambling man by any other name, by any other name.
So Pierce is going to find Catherine. We just located her and she is somewhere over here on the, at the edge of the hill. Did you get her? All right, there she is. What's that all over her face? Got some slugs in it. Yeah. yeah, it looks like slug juice. Well, we did see her when we first came up on her. She was out here in the field in the tall weeds and such, probably hunting for slugs and snails. And, it, you know, it's been recently raining, and so I'm sure there's been quite a few slugs and snails. Well, let's, let's take a look at her. A little closer look. Right <laughs> Is it? Yeah. No, she didn't like that, but we got it pretty much. No, it's yeah, okay. she'll wipe it off. She uses the, her front legs and, and wipe the stuff off of her face. Hmm. Well, um, take a look at her. Let's take a look here and see if we can learn about her. Um, for one, she's been eating slugs and snails because that's a favorite <laughs> treat of the eastern box turtle. Two, she's quite old. Wow. And the way we can tell she's older is... Um, the way we can tell that she's older is if you look at her scoots. These are her scoots. Each plate's called a scoot or scoot, pronounced differently, depending on who you're speaking to. Um, they're, they're very polished. You don't see a lot of, of her annuli, the, the concentric rings like the rings on a tree. Okay. And so they're really polished. And what that shows that is that she has been walking around in the forest for a very long time. And as turtles get older, the lines wear down, similar to, well, they just erode, basically. Uh, her belly is the same way. There's virtually no annuli on her belly. Yeah, and there's, there's not a lot of skin in between, like um, on the baby turtle that we saw. Right. She's, you know, knitted all together. She's tight. Um, and those um, annuli, those concentric circles on her each scute are pretty much faded almost to nothing. If you look at this one, there's a few you can see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But um, you can really only reliably judge the age of a turtle up to about 20 years because you can count up to 20 annuli and then they start to run together. I may have mentioned that with Jimmy Irwin. Hmm. But uh, after that point, you have to look at other identifying characteristics like, well, how smooth is she? Is she as smooth as glass like Catherine is? Or is she semi-smooth? Like does she have a few annuli that oh, you can still yeah. make out? But she's, very a, she's very smooth. So I would call her smooth as glass. And to me, that means she is very old. Hmm. Um, another indicator of being really old is damage to, to her shell. Well, she doesn't have a lot of shell damage, as you can see. Her shell's in really good condition. So maybe she's not as old as we think, but I'm still going to put her in the range of 50 or 60 years old. Wow. Um, yeah, she is a dirty turtle. She, I mean, she's been finding a good a good feed out here today. Um, you know, she's she's got a perfect shell. There's no chew marks That's anywhere, good. which is really kind of rare around here. Most of the turtles I've found around Urshine have lots of chew marks, mm -hmm. which just point to lots of dog or bear activity, probably more dog activity, yeah. people's pets. Um, coyotes, of course, okay. make young coyotes, like a pup would chew on a turtle. Now, I just want to know with her, um, you mentioned earlier that uh, we couldn't hurt her if we were to step on her. Uh, how much pressure can she withstand? Good question. I don't really know the answer to that, but I know that if you stepped on her, the reason you really probably wouldn't hurt her, um, or wouldn't hurt her too bad, is that the ground is really soft today. It's been raining a lot, and if you stepped on her, it would mash her down into the ground a little bit, and of course she has a dome-shaped shell, and of course the strongest structure, the strongest shape in nature is an arch. That's why you have arches in your feet, right? Um, and so that arch of her shell protects her and keeps the shell from breaking. But okay. she can't withstand the pressure of a car hitting her on a hard road. Oh, yeah. And that's why so many turtles die on the road. And that's why when you find a turtle crossing the road, what do you do? You pick it up and move it. To which side of the road? The side that it's pointing towards. That's right. You take it across the road, put it on the side of the road that it's going towards, and say, bye, turtle. Don't take, <laughs> don't take it home, right? No, no, yeah. no. Let it go, and it'll go on about its business and do what turtles are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. and, spread seeds around the forest and eat slugs and snails out of your garden and and do us all a great favor oh she is a dirty turtle <laughs> she's a gorgeous turtle though isn't oh she? yeah she is her face is just covered in slug juice <laughs> yeah 
And uh, see now, one thing, if you look at her eyes, remember Jimmy's eyes were, br were bright red. Oh, yeah, and yeah. see, her eyes are brown. Real pretty, like a light brown, I guess, or even an orangey brown. It's like a little bit of, a little tint of red, but yeah. very, very small. And that's a very good indicator that this is a female turtle. Um, also, being female, uh, turtles, box turtles anyway, their, their plastron, their belly, the back half of their plastron is flat in this area. If, if this was a male turtle, this would be curved inward. Oh, like a dish. yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's got a little bit of curve, but not too much. But not much at all. Yeah. And uh, also, female turtles have a very short little stubby tail. You can't really see it too much because she pulls okay, it in. Yeah. But the male's tail would fold over all the way to here. Huh. You would have a big, thicker tail. Wow. So, so that's Catherine. That's her transmitter, just like that's Jimmy. Cool. But hers has to be on top of her shell. It can't be in the back area so that if a male wants to mate with her, it's not in the way. Oh, mm. okay. Oh, oh, so they mate in the back area, not on top. They, yeah. That's why the male has that arch on oh, the bottom yeah. of the shell so that he can fit like a puzzle piece on her back and okay. mate with it. And if this was back here, it would interfere with mating. <laughs> and then we wouldn't get any more baby turtles and we got to have more baby mm -hmm. turtles so oh, we yeah. can have more adult turtles doing the job that turtles do. Birth control. Has she right. had um, babies since you've been tracking her? Do oh, you know? I am sure. She has laid a lot of eggs because just like I told you guys earlier, um, on the 16th of June, I found her right over there near that little old right. hog pen. And then, on the 16th of July, I found her back here again. But during that time, but yeah, she moved all the way over this mountain, three quarters of a mile away, laid her eggs. I got a report that she was in a yard laying her eggs, nesting. Mm -hmm. And then she came back one month later to the day it was right down here. Wow. And uh, so that means she had that job to do. She did it. She laid eggs. And she every year goes like clockwork in June Aww. to lay her eggs over the mountain. Have you ever seen them hatch? Never have. I've never found her eggs. But I know that she lays eggs because before she leaves, she weighs a certain amount. When she comes back, she okay. usually weighs 50 or 60 grams less. Oh. So that tells me that that's about the weight of a clutch of turtle eggs. So she's okay. laid her eggs and she's come back. Cool. And of course, this is the first time that someone has found her actually doing nesting activities, which means digging holes with her back legs in the, in the gravel of their driveway. And so that tells me, yes, she in fact does go over there to lay her eggs. Cool. It's, it's been confirmed. Yeah. That is cool. It's, it's, it's... Okay, Pierce, so let's go put Catherine back exactly where you found her okay. so that she can go on about her important turtle business. All right. All right. She may try to go up the hill, and that's fine. That's she'll go where she back, wants she to go. Over. Yeah, she may tumble down again, but she'll figure a way around it. Oh, oh, oh! Go, turtle, go! <laughs> Stretch. You can do it. Oh, there's a step for you. Good job. <laughs> oh, right over that oh, no. barbed wire. Whoa! No, 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 no. Oh no! Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh! She can do it. Well, that's where she was headed before. She will do it if, if ooh, ooh, go, go, go. Don't go to the left too far. No, let her, let her, let her, oh, ooh, tumble. I got it. That time I got it. <laughs> well, see, you she. You want me to lift her up? She has to do it herself. She was heading directly yeah. towards that before, and she's got to figure her own way through it. Smart We're not going to help her to help her because that would be messing with nature. Oh, okay. And off she goes. And you won't be there for the next time. That's right. See you later, Catherine. Beautiful. It's like shades of like it's not mm -hmm. even like one. Nice. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. It's like yeah, it might be the nice shade. Oh, I can't believe it, buddy. That's your second racer this summer. Good job. I can learn. Oh, you guys got to take with Florida. We have them. She said they're everywhere in Florida. That's pretty cool. That's Pierce's second snake catcher at Urshine. That's right. Yeah. He got the black rat. Yeah, that little black rat. That's right. Good job, Pierce. He's injured. The snake's injured. Where? On his, on his tail. tail. No, that's where he poops from. That's his business yeah. end. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Got some bugs in your ear, Pierce? <laughs> a friend of mine just posted yeah. some pictures. Yeah. She please, caught a snake please, eating please, a frog. Please, I'm worried about it. Eating 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 I know the feeling. That was, that was <laughs> really good. I mean, oh, that's close. sick. That, that snake was just like looking at yeah. the camera for you. Big frog, too. That's pretty wild. Uh -oh. Yeah.
Oh, that'd be cool with you. It's you like you get a picture. Struck. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Wouldn't it be awesome to have a video camera and have you do like that? Yeah. yeah. We have so, one. Hi, we have, no. yeah, we do have footage of another one doing that. Come here. Wait, I'm looking. Wait a minute. There's a snake. Do you see it? Looking to track me. Yeah, he is. Cool. They're sight hunters, so they're really uh, vision oriented. Notice his very big eyes. Yep. Racers are also known for having much bigger eyes. And he's going to lay into me. He almost did. See that? He got distracted by the camera. Cobra charmer. I have a thing with snakes. <laughs> people say it's nippy. I pick it up with his butt. Yeah, really? <laughs> I've said that before too. Yeah. Oh, you got me good. Hold on, hold on. Come here. He got you. Oh my gosh. Oh, he's going to try to do it. Oh, Pierce. Oh, he's chewing on you. <laughs> oh, he got you. All right. He, he decided he'd had enough. He's going to try to do it. Yeah. yeah, he started chewing. He, he, he totally decided he'd had enough. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Here comes the second one. Seventy point six. See there. I'm waiting for it to reset. Coming back in again. Third reading. Seventy point nine. Okay. Sorry about that, Jimmy, but. Uh, you know, you didn't fill a thing, and it's for your own good, so that we can help you and your species. So after averaging those three readings together, I get uh, an average reading of 70.5. And so that is Jimmy's shell temperature. And that's gonna be really good information to be compared with the temperature of the ground uh, and the surrounding vegetation. So that in the end, biologists, when they look at this data, they can understand more about the eastern box turtle and how they spend their time. Now, all that with this little plastic infrared thermometer that was donated to Earthshine Nature by my friend Jim Hardy. Thank you, Jim. This is going to be a very useful piece of equipment not only in the Nature Center, but here, tracking these animals as well. I can even use this to take the temperature of the skin of a timber rattlesnake, which will help us learn more about their temperature when they're sitting in the heat basking or in the shade. So this is going to be a really nice piece of equipment to have in these studies of these remarkable animals. Thank you, Jim. All right, now I've got to do something that I don't want to do, but I have to do. It's for Jimmy's safety. I'm going to have to take Jimmy out of the field for a day or so. And the reason is, well, let me show you the reason. The reason is the grass is very tall, as you can see. It's probably about three feet tall, and it's very hard to walk through. And you know, we have a lot of people that come to visit Earth Shine, and they need, they want to walk down and hike the trails. And of course, the grass is so tall, it's hard to walk through. And there's an issue of ticks. We do have quite a few ticks here. In fact, I've already pulled a couple off of me today, just crawling up my pant legs. Um, so we're gonna mow the field. And Jimmy likes to spend a lot of time in the grass, and so I'm going to have to take him in. He's going to he's going to stay in a plastic bucket overnight. He's not going to like it, but he's going to have a big bunch of grass from the field in there with him. And uh, he we put back in here as soon as the field's mowed tomorrow. So let's do that. Here he is. He's trying to make a break for Jimmy's place. He thought if he took off while my back was turned, he could escape. Because to him, I am nothing more than a predator trying to bother him and possibly eat him. So he wants to, to get away. Not this time, Jimmy. I'm really sorry. But. So there's Jimmy Irwin. And you can tell that he's been feeding heavily on slugs or snails or something very similar. He's got some snail or slug juice or worm or caterpillar juice on his beak there. He's really not too happy about the situation here that we're going to have to take him out of the field, out of his home. Right behind him there, you can see that's where he lives. All of the land behind Jimmy. That's his habitat. And unfortunately, because we are human and we have certain ideas about how we, we need to manage our lands, you know, our habitat, which is also his, um, it can affect him. So we're going to have to, to take care of him. He can't adapt to our way of life. We must adapt to his. And that means taking him out of the wild to protect him, even though he doesn't understand that we're trying to help him. Now the other turtles that live out here, they're gonna have to fend for themselves. And I hope they hunker down and bury into the dirt when the lawnmower comes over. It doesn't always happen, but maybe they'll feel the vibrations and dig down in and hide. The best thing you can do Best thing you can do if you have to mow lands like this, if you have big fields or pastures on your land, the best thing you can do is don't wait until it's this tall. Mow your grass regularly, keep it short, and then the turtles won't move in, and then they won't be in any danger. And it's not just turtles, it's rabbits, birds, snakes, all kinds of wildlife, even baby deer. There could be a little baby deer out here when we mow and we would never know it until it was too late. So keep your grass short, 
or mow at the hottest part of the day. Like right now, two o'clock, that's the best time to mow when it's really hot. And then the turtles and the snakes are buried down in the soil. He's really not liking this. And then the turtles and the snakes are buried down into the soil because it's too hot for them. And hopefully your mower will go right over them and never hurt them. All right, Jimmy, sorry about that, but we're gonna put you up, put you in a cool place. And then we'll bring him back tomorrow and let him go back into his habitat. All right, so that's it for Jimmy's tracks for today. We'll see you next time. Some men are made to plant their feet, stay right where they are. Some build their homes on the shipping sands beneath those shooting stars. Some bright and shining stars. A woman like you was born in love with the kind and gentle hand. But I was born a rolling stone and I'll die a rambling man. Yeah, I wish I could have stayed. I wish I could have changed. But a rambling man is a rambling man by any other name. By any other name.